This quick start video is an introduction to electronic court filing and service, including how to get started with the OASIS Legal XML Electronic Court Filing Version 4 standard, and some valuable lessons learned from e-filing implementations across the United States. I am Jim Cabral with MTG Management Consultants, and on behalf of the technical committee that developed the standard, it's my pleasure to introduce it to you today. Courts and attorneys across the country are realizing the benefits of electronic court records. Electronic records make case documents more accessible, reduce the use of paper, and save time and money. The successful migration to electronic records depends largely on the use and adoption of electronic filing, service, and payments to automate the exchange of data and documents that feed into the electronic record. Like e-records, e-filing and e-service have benefits for both litigants and courts. The benefits of e-filing and service to litigants include convenience, immediacy, accuracy, and often lower fees. The benefits of e-filing to courts and clerks are faster processing times, lower filing workloads, and simpler records management. An e-filing solution should minimally collect the data and documents to be presented to the court, structure the data and documents to satisfy court rules and judicial needs, and track and monitor progress of the filing, including ongoing communication with the litigants. To provide e-filing, a court can choose to either build a court-controlled user portal to facilitate the collection of data and documents, or enlist the services of a third-party intermediary called an e-filing service provider. It is advised that if a court elects to use an e-filing service provider, they use more than one. Experience in many jurisdictions has shown that multiple providers encourage competition and innovation and keep costs in line for the filers. But practically speaking, there is a point of diminishing returns. Every service provider requires some level of integration with the court systems and processes. The full benefit of e-filing is only achievable if the data and documents can be integrated into the court record with little to no human intervention. Integration between e-filing systems and services requires common functional and technical standards for data and document interoperability, particularly in systems in which there are multiple service providers. Two technical standards are critical to interoperability in many e-filing and e-service systems. The portable document format, which provides document interoperability, and ECF, which provides data interoperability. PDF is universally accepted as the document standard for e-filing. A PDF document can be created several different ways. Most word processing applications have a Save as PDF option, and EFSPs often offer a service to translate documents into PDFs before submitting them to the court. Another common way to create a PDF is through scanning software. A litigant can print and then scan a document to be filed. However, Scanned documents are larger and not natively text searchable, which diminishes their value for the court, litigants, and the public. The Legal XML Electronic Court Filing 4.01 standard was developed based on the functional standards for e-filing and service approved by the Conference of State Court Administrators and the National Association for Court Management, as well as the National Information Exchange Model, or NEM. ECF defines four major design elements, or MDEs, logical groupings of functions that support a particular part of the e-filing process. They are a filing assembly MDE, which enables a filer to create e-filing messages for submission to a court and returns filing confirmations, a filing review MDE, which enables a court to receive and review filing messages and prepare the contents for recording in the court record. A court record MDE, which enables a court to record electronic documents and docket entries. And a service MDE, which enables a filer or a court to transmit filings to other parties that are participating in the case electronically and are entitled to pick copies of the filing. These MDEs work together to provide e-filing and e-service capabilities to the filers and courts. Integrations within the scope of the ECF 4 standard are shown here in orange. The remaining integrations are left to the filer, court, or vendors to define. Nationally, ECF is the de facto standard for court e-filing data. 
Casca and NACOM have supported the NEEM and ECF for almost a decade, and ECF 4.01 was approved as an OASIS standard in May 2013. Most major case management systems imply support for ECF, and as of September 2013, eight state courts have adopted ECF 4.01 as the basis for their statewide e-filing systems. So how does a court or solution provider get started with ECF? There are seven basic steps. First, you need to identify your filing assembly and service systems. The filers will use these systems to prepare and submit court filings and receive service electronically. You need to identify at least one filing assembly system, but you may have several. Service systems are optional. There are several options for implementing the filing assembly and service systems. Multiple vendors currently provide solutions that include filing assembly and service. Some courts have developed their own e-filing systems that include filing assembly and service. And in the future, legal case management systems may be extended to automatically submit documents to the court. The second step is to identify filing review and court record systems where filings will be received from the filing assembly systems and reviewed. If the filings are accepted, the filing review system will submit them to the court record. Each e-filing implementation requires at least one filing review and court record system. And there are three options for implementing filing review and court record systems. They may be integrated with the front end, the filing assembly systems. They may be integrated with the back end, the court, case, and document management systems. Or they may be a standalone system in the middle. And several solutions are available or a court may develop their own. Next, you must select the integration standards that will connect the filing assembly, filing review, court record, and service systems. The easy choice is to conform to ECF 4, which is designed to support a wide variety of e-filing business models. For instance, in some implementations, a vendor provides all components of the e-filing system and integrates directly with the court record systems. In other implementations, one or more vendors provide the filing assembly and service systems that integrate with the filing review and court record systems provided by the court. In other implementations, a court provides the entire system. In each scenario, conformance with ECF 4 simplifies the complexity and improves the adaptability, reusability, and interoperability of these integrations. The fourth step to e-filing is to configure and extend ECF for particular courts through the creation of court policies. Court policies define court-specific information such as the types of cases and documents that may be filed, additional filing information not defined in ECF, and code lists. The fifth step is to understand and select the ECF messages to be implemented. There are four required messages and nine optional messages. Some messages move data and documents into the court record systems, while other messages report the status back to the clerk and filer. The optional messages enable filers to serve filings or retrieve court policies, cases, and documents, or check on the cost and status of a filing. The sixth step is the selection of a service interaction profile that defines the messaging system that will securely and reliably transmit the ECF messages. ECF defines service interaction profiles for web services and portable media such as CDs or thumb drives, and implementers are also free to define their own custom profiles. Finally, you must develop, test, and deploy the e-filing system. Courts and vendors configure and extend their ECF solutions to conform to the published court policies and then test the complete system to validate interoperability. Once you complete the seven-step process, congratulations! You will not only have successfully implemented e-filing and service to the benefit of your filers and courts, you will also join a community of other courts and providers that are learning from what works and are actively improving the ECF standards. Some of the most valuable lessons we have learned from the ECF community include You don't have to be a NEEM expert to use ECF. NEEM 2 is baked into ECF 4. NEEM and ECF solve many, but not all interoperability issues. 
Courts and vendors have implemented ECF using a variety of service interaction profiles that are not necessarily all compatible. Solution providers need a way to certify the conformance of their solutions with ECF. In response, the iJUICE Institute has initiated an ECF conformance and testing program as part of their springboard initiative. You should expect new issues. As standards clear certain bottlenecks to information sharing, they often uncover others. Not all barriers are in the technology. Finally, the use of standards can generate significant returns on investment. This chart illustrates the incremental benefits of adopting XML, NEEM, and ECF as the basis for your e-filing systems. On behalf of the OASIS Legal XML Electronic Court Filing Technical Committee and the many contributors to the standard, we hope that this presentation has been useful to you. For more information on ECF, please go to oasis-open.org or contact me, Jim Cabral, or Jim Harris with the National Center for State Courts. I thank you for watching, and I wish you success in your e-filing projects. Thank you.